Hey everyone, Sacred Sane here, welcoming you to the third episode of the series, What if Goku and Gohan were trapped in the time chamber? If you enjoyed the video, then please consider subscribing, liking the video, and coming down below what you enjoyed. If you want to talk to me or my community, and then you can join my Discord server through the link in the description of the video, and you can also support the channel by becoming a channel member. Anyway, with that out of the way, let's get into the video. This video begins on the world of the Kai's. Goku has been training there for the past couple years and has become immensely more powerful. Within the first month of training, Goku broke the Z Sword and the Elder Kai was released, meaning it took only a month for Goku to get ultimate. I know some of you will think that this is out of character, but one, this Goku has a different mindset to the Canon Goku because of his experiences, and two, even Canon Goku is open to getting the ritual done on him before the Tournament of Power. There simply wasn't enough time to do so. Anyway, this ultimate Goku is immensely powerful. Remember that the ultimate form brings out all the latent power of the warrior at the time and then surpasses it. If Goku did get the ultimate form in canon before the tournament of power, he would have a power that surpasses his blue Kai Ken times 20 transformation. This Goku, even if unable to use the form at the moment, did have a dark and very powerful transformation in the past. So his multiplier from ultimate will surpass the one of that transformation. Goku would then continue training on the world of the Kai's for the remaining time before Battle of Gods, learning numerous techniques along with increasing in power, but still going to earth on the weekends to have time with his family and even spar with Gohan in Super Saiyan Rage, now surpassing his son while in the ultimate transformation, which does give Gohan slightly more motivation to train, but he is still more focused on his work at Capsule Corp. We reach the events of Battle of Gods. Beerus awakes from his slumber after his dream about fighting the Super Saiyan God. And after erasing the egg holding Majin Buu, he asks Whis where the Saiyans who are alive are located. Whis says, the majority reside on Earth. However, interestingly, one of them is currently on the world of the Kai's. This intrigues Beerus. If this Saiyan isn't the Super Saiyan God, he doubts the others could be. He's literally on a planet of the gods. Beerus instructs Whis to take him there. The angel doing so, and on the world of the Kai's, the Elder Kai, Shin, and Kabito all begin to panic as they sense the Destroyer God heading their way. Goku is excited, wanting to challenge him, but the Kai's just sigh at this, knowing they won't be able to stop him from doing so. Shortly after, Beerus and Whis arrive, Goku introducing himself, and Beerus asks him if he is the Super Saiyan God. Goku says he isn't sure, but he might be. Beerus then tells Goku to power up to his fullest, Goku powering up into Ultimate, and Beerus, although impressed with Goku's power, doesn't sense God Ki within him. Maybe trace amounts of it due to training with the Kai's, but nothing that would make a difference for his power. But Goku still challenges Beerus anyway, and Beerus does accept. However, he defeats Goku in a similar way to how he does to Super Saiyan 3 Goku in canon. Even though Goku is far stronger in this timeline, he is still nothing compared to Beerus for the time being. Goku does still do a little better, but the power isn't the reason for that. The use of the Kai Kai, which takes less effort than instant transmission, alongside summoning blocks of Kutching to get in the way of Beerus, were the things that allowed him to last slightly longer. After the fight, Beerus and Whis then head to Earth. Meeting Gohan and Vegeta at Bulma's birthday party, he both also have no knowledge of the Super Saiyan God, and after hearing how easily Beerus beat Goku, they don't even attempt to fight him. Beerus is displeased, but without Majin Buu stealing his pudding, Beerus actually has a good time, so when Goku shows up and says they can use the Dragon Balls to ask about the Super Saiyan God, Beerus is even more pleased. Once Shenron is summoned, he tells them about the Super Saiyan God ritual. The Saiyan's deciding to give it to Vegeta, so he has a way to catch up, but after they try the ritual once, they realise they are missing one Saiyan. Since this time, Gohan and Videl never met, they are going to have to find the remaining Saiyan elsewhere. So Vegeta simply wishes to bring his brother Tarbal to Earth, and after some small talk and explaining the situation, the ritual is performed on Vegeta once again, and this time, it works. So Vegeta becomes the first Super Saiyan God. Vegeta and Beerus then have the Battle of Gods. Vegeta doing around the same as Goku did in canon, although Vegeta is actually stronger due to sparring with Gohan and Goku occasionally. Eventually, however, the battle comes to an end with Vegeta absorbing the power of Super Saiyan God into its base, and Beerus and Whis then heading back to Beerus' planet. Some time passes. Goku and Vegeta now sparring regularly, since now when Vegeta is in Super Saiyan 2, he is actually a match for Goku in Ultimate. That's how much stronger the God Ritual made him. Gohan joins in sometimes as well, but he didn't really train as much, so he has fallen behind a bit. One of the times, Vegeta and Goku are sparring outside of Capsule Corp, Whis shows up in order to go to lunch with Bulma, and after some convincing, 
Along with bribing him with delicious food, Whis agrees to train both Goku and Vegeta. Gohan then walking outside to talk to Bulma about something, and Whis offers to train him as well. Gohan is reluctant, but Bulma actually encourages him to go with them. He works too much anyway. He deserves some paid leave. Because of this, along with Goku basically begging him to come along, he agrees. So all three Saiyans head to Beerus' planet and begin to train under Whis. Goku and Gohan achieve God Key after some time, and once they do, all three Saiyans work towards a greater power, and eventually, they all achieve Super Saiyan Blue. When Goku uses the ultimate now, he's just a beast, since the acquiring of God Key and the forms along with it only make his ultimate form that much stronger. Whis would attempt to teach the three Saiyans the basics of Ultra Instinct, hoping at least one of them may have the ability to reach it. But it's simply not a match for Vegeta's personality, and Goku seems to wish to evolve in a different way, reaching a form that no other Saiyan has obtained. Gohan seems to be the only one to actually take some things from these lessons, so Gohan is the one Whis has the most hope for. That along with him naturally having higher potential than the other two Saiyans, due to his hybrid nature. Back on Earth, Frieza's men use the Dragon Balls gathered by the Pilaf gang to revive the Emperor of the Universe. Once they do, they quickly retreat from the planet and give Frieza all the information they have on the Saiyans. This leads to Frieza training for four months, and the moment he achieves his golden form, him and his army begin to head back to Earth. With Gohan not being there, the Z fighters have a much harder time against Frieza's army. Piccolo not being able to handle the likes of Togoma, so when he is getting beaten down, Whis finally answers a call from Bulma, and she screams about the situation going on. Luckily, Goku has the Kai Kai which means he doesn't need to sense the energy of anyone on Earth. So Gohan and Vegeta grab onto him as he teleports to the battlefield. And then, the three Saiyans stare down Frieza. Vegeta quickly takes care of Toguma, and Gohan wipes out the remaining members of Frieza's army. Goku taking that as the reason why he gets to fight Frieza first. This annoys Vegeta, but reluctantly he agrees. And Gohan really doesn't mind, so Goku cracks his knuckles and flies towards Frieza. Him and Frieza floating in the air, face to face, and Frieza transforms into his final form. Goku and Frieza then begin to clash, but Goku is simply far out of Frieza's league, so after a short scuffle, Frieza resorts to transforming into his golden form, and Goku transforms into ultimate in response. Frieza still believes that Goku is in his base form, so he asks if Goku is going to transform into that Super Saiyan form, but Goku says that he's going to be fine just the way he is. Frieza then tries to punch Goku. Goku dodging the blow and catching his fist, simply smirking and then landing a gut punch on Frieza before proceeding to land an uppercut that sends him into the sky. Goku then powers up Kamehameha, seeing that he won't let him hurt any more of his friends, and he fires the blast, obliterating the tyrant with low difficulty. With that out of the way, Goku and Vegeta go back to training with Whis, but Gohan decides to remain on Earth, believing someone needs to be there to protect it and he also wants to get back to work. That being said, we move on to the Tournament of Destroyers arc, which starts off the same, since only Goku and Vegeta are on Beerus' world at the time. Once Goku goes to choose a team, there are some obvious choices. Vegeta, Gohan, Piccolo. But since Boo isn't alive here, they can't pick him. But since Beerus is confident in the ability of the Saiyans, it doesn't really matter to him. They don't need any other members. Once they arrive in the arena, and Champa sees this, he is outraged by the confidence of Beerus. However, it just means he'll have an even easier time taking the Earth from Universe 7. Nobody can defeat Hit. Well, at least that's what Champa thinks. We go through the tournament as normal to begin with. Goofy fights and beats Botamo, then being poisoned by Frost. Piccolo then also gets poisoned when he nearly beats Frost, and Vegeta is the one to knock him out. After it's revealed he used poison. Vegeta then helps Kaba to achieve Super Saiyan before knocking him out as well. And he then beats Megeta, meaning now it is Vegeta vs Hit. Even though Vegeta is stronger than his canon self, he is still caught off guard by Hit's time skip ability. And because of this, he gets knocked out. Meaning up next, Goku is allowed to fight once again and goes against Hit. Gohan was meant to be next, but you could tell his dad was really eager to fight him. So he let him have it. As for the battle between Goku and Hit, things go fairly similar to begin with. Hit needing to evolve early though, since as soon as Goku goes Super Saiyan Blue, Hit is forced to evolve like he did against Canon Goku and Blue Kaioken. The battle is ferocious, but Goku then says it's time he gets serious. Hit being shocked and thinking he's bluffing, but once Goku uses ultimate, Hit comes to the terrifying realisation that he wasn't. 
once Ultimate comes out. Hit doesn't even get the chance to evolve his time skip, as Goofy wipes the floor of him way too fast. But in the future timeline, things aren't going so well. Trunks is running away from the man who killed his mother, but he's far more terrified than he ever could have been in canon, because he saw the kind of monstrous power this guy could achieve. Goofy Black. But with that, we are going to end off this part. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video, and if you did, then make sure to subscribe, like, and comment to help me in the algorithm. Huge shout out to the channel members, appreciate you guys for sticking with me even while I took my break, so thanks so much for the support. But yeah, other than that, hope to see you all in the next one. Peace. Hey everyone, it's me Goku. Make sure to like the video and subscribe to my friend Sacred Saiyan on YouTube. Thank you all for watching.